So we're back with our car post blasting. Um, I tried to get some footage, some more footage of the actual blasting process, but the problem is, is that it is so noisy and there's so much material and blasting material going on that uh, I'd risk damaging my equipment and I didn't want to do that. So um, I got a little bit of footage in there, but um, for the protection of everything, it was just, it was too hard to, to film um, and work and, and keep it keep the equipment safe so this is after the process was done Um, and actually a little bit after the process was done because uh, we went ahead and um, had done some more work to it as well as you can see um, it's all been etched primed and weld primed um, no real big surprises here everything is pretty much I'd already done most of the digging out of all the holes and and everything so really not a lot of surprises here uh, if you're wondering why the whole car is not blasted, uh, for anybody who's in the know or isn't in the know, you don't want to, you know, th this roof is in really good shape and it's really smooth and it's not damaged and you really want to avoid blasting stuff like this because you'll warp the sheet metal um, both from both the heat and the actual action of the blasting media hitting the panel um, so you always want to try to avoid doing that if you can it's not a big deal to take a a da a disc sander belt sander or anything like that and, and knock all this down and get it smooth again uh, we have to do all that as part of the paint prep process anyway so there's just no reason to potentially risk damaging good sheet metal uh, by blasting it um, we we stuck to all stuff that was seamed and reinforced and welded and where holes were and stuff that we're already going to have to be adding sheet metal to and we're not worried about finishing uh, so but we as you can see we left most of the rest of the stuff alone um, same theory down here on this quarter panel it's still got the black paint on it this is what the trunk looks like again already dug most of the stuff out so it's just a little pitted but really nothing crept up or surprised me here. It's all pretty much the way we expected it to look. The biggest thing that was probably, I say surprise-wise, was up here in the windshield frame. Um, this We got a little spot right there in the windshield frame. And this windshield frame area looked really good before we blasted. So I'm surprised that maybe it came through the backside or... There was some um, there was some rust on the inside of the car that, that caused that. We'll have to look into that look into that later. Um, inside of our vent cowl is actually really good. This is an area that's really common to rust on these cars, and ours is in pretty good shape. There's a couple little spots. Hopefully, we can address like right here. This is the worst spot on the vent cowl, and I'm thinking we can probably go ahead and clean this up, weld it up, fix it, and not have to worry about replacing the whole cowl because the upper side's good. As you can see, finished lapping the rest of the, the front end, the front aprons and the frame rails off. That's your. This is what the inside of your torque box looks like. You can see we have more Bondo, more filler, more netting in there. Uh, it's all crap. Um, I actually called up Desert Valley Auto Parts and they had a sedan there and I'm having them ship me two supposedly perfectly good rust-free torque boxes and two whole rocker panel assemblies, inners and outers. 
Um, it's my first time using them, but we'll see what they look like when we get here and the whole process. Uh, DVAP or Desert Valley Auto Parts, probably seen them on uh, Roadkill and Junkyard Gold and things like that. They do actually sell parts every day to everybody. They have over 10,000 cars in stock in two locations. So um, take a look, see if there's anything there for your project, maybe. Uh, it's the only place I was able to find parts for mine. This is our donor car. You see we did a little bit of work to this in the meantime, too. Okay. Yeah, mine's not like that at yeah, all. That's what I mean. <laughs> There's no way you're getting that out of there. I mean, if you... Yeah, none of, none of that is there on mine. Although, it looks like you could... You could come... If you come look at... If you come look... Well, I don't know. Maybe you can see from there. But if you come look at it this side, maybe you can get... Yeah, see? This is where I cut it with the plasma. Yeah. Right up like that. I don't know. I don't have an answer for you on that one. Uh, gone ahead and got our front suspension out of it. It's up on up on blocks and jack stands right now. And we started, it's hard to tell, but we started cutting everything away. To pull, We're going to try to pull this whole out as one piece. We're going to pull the whole front clip of the car out. So if you can see right there where we started popping all the spot welds running an air hammer in there to pull all those braces out this is a convertible so the convertible got some extra bracing and stuff on this front subframe that the hardtops didn't I'm planning on keeping all this uh, one it'll help line the front end up and make that easier and two it'll give this car a little more stiffness which it desperately needs um, they need all the stiffening help they can get. So I'm going to hope to try to maintain that piece and that piece. And there's a bunch of extra bracing on the underside too. We were a little bit of the process here. This is part of the tow board. And you can see we actually have a really good... There's, there's what a non-rotten torque box looks like from the inside. Uh, our, our passenger side torque box in this car, the inside of it was actually pretty good. The rest of it's it's not that great, um, but I am trying to salvage it because maybe I might need a second one. Maybe somebody else might need a second one. So I'm trying to cut this whole thing out of here without tearing this up. So I took the plasma cutter and ran around the outside of the tow board to get access to it. I'll take you over to the driver's side so you can see what... One that's been hacked up kind of looks like, and was what most of these look like. This one already had some rust issues from beforehand. And somebody tried to repair. You can see there's a plate in there, and it's been all kind of booger welded in there, and some rot here in the corner. Um, yeah, this one is 
probably not really salvageable unless somebody wants it for a template. I don't know. But as hard as to get parts of these things, I'm just probably going to do my best to try to save as much of it as I can, offer it to somebody who might need it. So anyway, that'll do it for this video and this update on the car. As you can see, we are moving forward and getting some things done. The next time you see me, I'm hoping I'll have some video of putting, maybe I'll do a time lapse swapping this panel over to this panel. And again, all kind of new to me. So I'm learning as I go. But I have some help now, so that's a big that's a big difference. That's a big help. Uh, not doing this on my own. I have a guy one day a week now coming and helping me. Um, better than that, I hope you like this. If you did, if you give me a like, that helps me. If you comment and subscribe, I'd really appreciate that. Uh, and I'll see you next time here on Wheels Forgotten.